Moin Moin and welcome to Ralph's Photo Booth and Ralph's Photo Flight. Yeah, some days ago I presented to you the uh, brand new DJI Phantom 2 Vision Plus. And today we want to start for the first flight of the Vision. So there are some things to do um, when you're at home before you get out and start the uh, quadrocopter. First of all, check in your country if you need an insurance. In Germany you need an insurance. Uh, it's the law to have an insurance if you want to fly fly these uh, quadrocopter or hexacopters um, and in certain countries I know there is also the law to have an insurance and there are some restrictions uh, of flight areas of uh, the, the height you fly, the distance you fly, first person view and so on and so on. So please check in your country um, uh, what the law is and which insurance you need and which regulations you have in your country before you go out and fly. First of all, we have to start the uh, Vision Plus here in the office and therefore you should remove the propellers because if you uh, accidentally um, turn the sticks together the uh, Vision Plus will start and I think that's not a real good idea in your office um, because you get, can get hurt or uh, office can get damaged. So please remove the propellers. Um, before we start you should um, you should charge the battery. The battery is here on the back side. Remove the battery out of the compartment here. Two, two uh, buttons you have to press and then you have to pull the uh, battery. Um, on the Downside on, on, on this side of the battery, there are two connectors, and if you have the charger, this is the charger, and the charger you have all these two uh, connectors. And please move it in like this. Look that these these piece here is outside; otherwise, the uh, thing won't get in completely so move it out and that's it and then when you get the, when you start charging the green lights will flash one after the other and if the battery is full you will see mine is not really full I made the German review before um, then the four lights will get green and then you know the battery is completely full so that's it if the battery is full Put it in the battery compartment here on the back side. You can put it only in one direction, in the other is not possible. Then put it in and push it a little bit so it has to go in like this. Click and that's it. Next part are the two batteries. One is in the remote control, the one is here under the remote control. Here's the battery compartment for normal batteries. And then we have the repeater which you charge via a USB cable um, and that's it. So if you have charged everything, remove the propellers, switch on the uh, repeater switch on the remote control and after this switch on the phantom press it once and immediately a second time and then you will hear the sound and it is on one thing i forgot that's very important oh i missed this one accidentally sorry one thing is very important before you start the phantom Please remove the cover of the lens. That's very important. It will not happen anything if you miss it, but it's better to remove it before you start. And so, sorry for this. Please remove the the security holder or the this part here. Please remove it before you start the vision. Just pull it to the side and that's it. When you when you take your Phantom to holiday or if you go out um, and make a longer drive with your car or something or you want to, to put it on your backpack, um, please put this, uh, this uh, security cover on the camera because the gimbal is safe and it's protected. So now we have it removed and again start the vision the second time. Here we are. And now the gimbal is perfect, everything is fine 
and that's it. First of all, you have to check some of the settings of the Vision Plus and therefore you need the, um, the software on your computer. Um, you will find it if you go to the phantom page dgi.com and here you find the point for everyone and in the section for everyone here you find the vision plus if you go on the vision plus you have the section downloads and here you find the uh, user manual in english you find the pilot training the quick start and then you find the support and drivers and here you have for windows the phantom 2 vision assist software 3.0 and also exactly the same for the Mac and one of these two um, versions you should install on your uh, computer. Next point you have to put the USB cable in the Phantom on the front side of the Phantom. Here you have the connector, remove this cover and then put the USB USB cable in like this. Okay, here we are. That's it. Now the cable is in. And now we start the Phantom 3.0 software. Sorry, that was the wrong one. Here we are. And that's it. There's an announcement, new, new firmware. I have this one still on the Phantom, so I don't need this one. This is the front page of the software. Here on the, uh, on the right uh, down corner, you see the green light, so there's a connection. If you move the stick here, you see there it goes, so you know the connection is perfect. Um, on the front page you have some information about the vision. Um, and next point is basic. If you go to basic you have the transmitter and one thing you have to do first before you go out make a command stick calibration. So you put the start button then you take your remote control and then move the sticks to all the corners, to the left, right, up and so on and that we really will do for both sticks. So that's it. If you are ready, re release the sticks to the mid position or the middle position and then you have finished and that's it. Make a check if it works. Yes, it works. Perfect. So this was the uh, stick calibration. The next point are the gain values. Um, let the gain values like they are. If you're uh, um, a little advanced flyer and have some, fly some more flights behind you, you may um, want to change the gain values. But at the first time, let the gain values like they are. The gain values, they say how fast the reaction of stick and um, the, the wind and stuff like that, how fast the uh, copter should react. Next point is advanced and that once you have the battery settings and in the battery settings you can say where the low level starts uh, 30% or 20% in my opinion leave it like it is on 30% and critical battery level on 15% because these are real good values and here you can see some more information about the um, battery, how much, uh, how often you have charged the battery, the percentage of life and so on. Next point are the limits and here in the limits we have, um, you can say how far you can fly, the maximum radius and the maximum height. Um, you should check in your country what other limits are allowed to fly and set the limits there. In Germany it's usually fly 300 meter in height and the maximum radius you can fly as long as you can see the quadrocopter. So that's in Germany the law you have to see your quadrocopter or hexacopter. It's not allowed to fly with first person view as far as you can. So the limit of 1500 meter now is a little bit too much because you never will see 
the Vision Plus in 1500 meters without the glasses or without uh, uh, specs or something like this. Next point is the flight limit of special areas and that's new in the uh, Vision Plus software. Um, it's also available for the uh, Vision when you upgrade to the firmware 3.0 but most of the Vision flyers stay on firmware 2.0 and they don't have the limits. So the limits were heavily discussed in the, in the groups, in the Phantom groups. Um, so if DJI is allowed to set these limits or not, they did it and so we have to deal with it. What mean this? The flight limit for special areas, special areas are airports, mainly airports. And in the airports, you have an area in the center and in the center, that's absolutely no flight zone. If you try to start your Phantom Plus in this area, nothing will happen. So it stays on the ground and that's it. And the next area, the orange area, point B, you can start in the close to the center up to uh, 10.5 meters. And in the outer areas, you can go up to 120 meters. And then comes the zone C and D. And uh, there's uh, mainly a no flight limit, so you can fly as high as you want uh, or what the regulations in your country says. So these are the two different uh, um, uh, special areas. You have the A area, that's the one here, and you have the B area. And in the B area, you have the center part that's uh, one kilometer in diameter and uh, in, in radius. And there you can fly in, in uh, uh, C and D. You can uh, fly um, as high as you want. So A and B. Question: Can you can you um, can you overfly this one with different settings? Yes, you can. If you go on the manual mode, and the manual mode um, you have these limitations not. And the other option is if you cut the GPS antenna, you won't have these options also because without GPS signal, the um, Vision Plus or the Vision doesn't know where it is, so um, they can't act weight the um, flight limits of special areas. So it depends on the GPS signal and also if you have only a few, um, a few satellites it also won't work. So it's very very important if you fly close to these areas that you check before if you have enough satellites because it can happen that you start and um, then you get one satellite more, the seventh or the, the I don't know, six or seven, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, and then the uh, Phantom starts landing because you're in a no flight zone. So that's very important to check before um, you start. Next point are the tools. And here in the tools, we have the EMU calibration. You have to do this by, I don't know, I did it only once. I did an advanced calibration and um, yeah, so um, if everything works fine and the values are perfect, um, you don't have to do emo calibration and you see the values are almost uh, by zero and the, the vision stays here. And if I move the vision, you see the gyroscope works and the acceleration works, um, the compass works. So everything is fine. So there's no need to make emu calibration. Then we have the point upgrade. And in the point upgrade, we have the main controller, GPS receiver, the camera pre C130 and battery and Sen emu. And they are all on the um, on the um, level I need so there's no need to make an upgrade. If there's a point which you have to upgrade that's very easy press the button upgrade and then the software makes an upgrade so that's um, very easy to do. As I said before we have two modes to fly. We have the Phantom mode and we have the NASA mode. To change this is here on the top here where the, uh, it says Phantom. If you press the button here, it says do not enable the NASA working mode before complete advanced flight maneuvers in the Phantom pilot training guide. So you have to be a little bit flight experience before you change to the NASA mode. Um, if you have so change because you have there 
some more options which you don't have in the phantom mode. So we change now to the nether mode. Okay, here we are. So there's no need to save anything. It's directly written to the to the copter. So even uh, ever every time when you change a value here, you don't have to to, to push a save or write button. That's um, actually in life in in real time changed in the copter. So go to the view, and here in the view we have one more field. That's this one. I'll show you later what this means, and we have the IOC, the intelligent uh, orientation control, and that's a point I will show you also. Let's go to the basic settings. In the basic settings again, we have the remote control and there's one control switch more that's this one here the U and here you can change between GPS Addy and manual but here you have three choices and I show you what this mean the switch which you use now is the one here that's GPS Ati or manual and if I move the switch you see we have the different settings here so what does it mean? First is a GPS mode. The GPS mode is the mode you fly also when you're in the, in the phantom mode. GPS, the copter does everything. Uh, the GPS means you, the, the hold position. You park the copter in the air and the copter stays perfect on the, sp on the place. There's uh, a perfect hovering over the point you put it. Um, the copters stay clear, leveled, and that's the GPS mode. If you go to the ETI mode, the ETI mode means that the copter is also um, level in the air, but there is no GPS support. So if you go up and there is light wind, the copter will fly with the wind. You have to uh, turn the control sticks on the remote control to work against the wind to let the copter stay in position. So that's the ETI mode. Um, no GPS support, um, but the height control and the level control. Last point is a manual. In the manual mode you have no support, you fly completely manual, no GPS, no height, no nothing. It's very difficult when you never fly in a manual mode, it's very difficult to learn this. So take your time and um, one uh, good tip when you want to fly in the manual mode Go first in the ETI mode, so learn to fly in the ETI mode, and then we are, when you're uh, good in ETI mode, just fly the copter in a height of like 60, 70, 80 meters, and then go to the manual mode and make the first um, uh, um, flight maneuvers. If you if you see that the copter get out of control and um, you 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 um, uh, you lose your copter, it will fall down or something like that. Turn the switch immediately to GPS because if you turn it to GPS, the Vision Plus try to stabilize and it takes like one or two seconds, one second hopefully, and the copter still stays perfectly in the air. So, and that's the reason why you have to go a little bit higher and doesn't do this in 10 meters or 20 meters because if you lose control, you only have like 20 meters to crash um, and that's not not enough to change back in the GPS mode so you have to go up like 70 80 meters um, and there you have enough room um, before you crash um, to turn on the GPS mode to stabilize the copter so that's the reason why you have to go a little bit higher if you don't want the risk to put accidentally on the manual mode, you can activate the fail-safe mode or you can again activate the ADI mode so you have uh, GPS and two times ADI on the switch. Um, Failsafe mode means if you go on the failsafe mode, it's mainly the same if you turn off the remote control. The copter goes in the failsafe mode. When do you need the failsafe mode? When you lost your copter, when you don't know where the copter is. Um, 
it goes 20 meter up and then flies back to your home point or you can change the fail safe mode also that the copter lands at the point uh, where it is now um, usually 20 meter up and then coming back to you the problem if there are buildings or trees which are higher than 20 meters the copter doesn't know this and flies immediately directly in the building in the trees and that's it so you should use the fail safe mode very careful not too early um, and um, usually it's better um, if you if you lose the, the connection um, and you're not sure fly high fly high and then start the fail safe mode so the copter is high enough to get around buildings or trees so that's the fail safe mode gain is exactly the same which we had in the phantom mode going to the advanced um, here we have the fail safe mode what i said before you have the two options landing and the go home and landing mode usually you go in the go home and landing mode if you're only landing mode you see the copter lands where it is and these are the different settings i would suggest to go to take the go home and landing mode Next point is the IOC, that's the Intelligent Orientation Control. What does it mean? The orientation control is on the other switch, that's the switch here on the side. And if you, if you turn the switch, you will see nothing happens because you have to activate the Intelligent Orientation Control. Here is the checkbox activated and now when I move the stick here you see we get the change in the different modes. So what does the IOC mean? Usually when you fly on the phantom mode or if, or if the uh, orientation control is off this one is front, this one is left, this one is right, this one is back. So doesn't matter in which direction the copter points, doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, have a change if the copter points in this direction or in this direction, if it's uh, in front of me, if it's behind me, if it's left from me, if it's right from me, doesn't matter. If you put the stick forward, it goes straight forward. In this direction, in this direction, doesn't matter it goes straight forward in the direction the camera points. And exactly the same is if you turn right, the copter goes right. If you turn left, the copter goes left. If you turn back, the copter goes left. No, uh, no difference where the copter is, which height it has, doesn't matter. Uh, behind me, in front of me, if it's point this direction, this direction, doesn't matter front is flying in this direction in the direction the camera points that's the normal mode if you fly in the phantom mode or if you fly in uh, the orientation control off mode next point is the home lock what does this mean home lock where you start the copter and when the copter um, save the home point that's your home point so what does it mean? When I fly forward, the copter flies forward. So here's my home point, here's my copter, I fly forward, goes forward. The copter points to the side, you fly forward, copter goes forward. Copter is on this side, forward, this direction. Camera points towards you, forward, this is forward. So it doesn't matter in which direction the camera point, um, doesn't matter in which direction the, the copter stays. If you put forward, the copter goes forward in this direction, this direction or this direction. Depends where the copter is, but forward is flying away from you, backwards is flying towards. Again, doesn't matter where the copter is, if it's behind you, if it's left or right, if you pull the throttle backwards, flying backwards, it comes to your home point, doesn't matter where it is and which orientation the copter has. So that's a very good point. If you lose the control of your copter, you're not quite sure which direction it points, you're not quite sure if it is the copter you see in the sky, 
go to the home lock mode and then you can pull, uh, put the throttle backwards, flying backwards and the copter will directly fly to your home point. This works only if you have waited long enough so that the copter um, get the home point. I will show you outside when we make the outside flight when I uh, in, the, in the second part of the video uh, um, you will see what you have to do outside to um, get the signals here and if you wait it long enough so the home point is saved and then there is a home point and the copter will fly to your home point. Next point is course lock. What means course lock? Course lock means you start the copter in this direction. So the camera points in this direction. And this direction is always forward. This direction is always left. And this direction is always right. And this direction is always backwards. So doesn't matter if the copter points in this direction or in this or in this or in this doesn't matter, forward is all the time this way. And it doesn't matter if the copter stays 100 meter to your left, 100 meter to your right, doesn't matter, forward is forward. What for you can you need it? Um, if you make uh, like a roof inspection, um, you um, point the copter parallel to the roof um, and then you start. Then you go to the um, course lock mode. You fly the copter close to the edge of the roof and then you have only to move. You can turn the copter camera pointing on the roof and then, oops, we have to switch on and off. After a while the remote control says do something with me um, and then you point the camera towards the roof pull the, the stick forward the copter flies forward parallel straight at the roof long at the roof side along so that's one thing where you can uh, use the um, course lock flying. So these are the three different modes intelligent orientation control off or phantom mode, camera front and the copter flies in this direction where the camera points when you pull the throttle front. You have the home lock where the copter if you pull the throttle backwards flying backwards comes towards you and the course lock where depends on the orientation you start the copter this one is uh, forward and the other part is backwards. So these are the three orient intelligent orientation control um, settings. Next point is battery that's what we know from the phantom mode and the last point is limits that's what we know also and then we come to the tool again exactly the same upgrade and that's it. I leave the Phantom in the uh, NASA mode and um, now we can close this menu. Everything is set up and um, you know the most important functions of the uh, software. So that's it. Remove the USB cable. And the next point is we come to the camera settings and to connect the uh, mobile device with the um, with the Vision Plus. So therefore, we I take my iPad. By the way, the holder is from a German manufacturer. So if you want this one, uh, um, it's not so easy in in the foreign countries. In Germany, that's a German manufacturer. Um, okay, so let's go to the uh, main menu, just keep the code here. Okay, so go to the main menu and here we have the Wi-Fi connection and in the Wi-Fi collection connection you have to go to the Phantom. This one is the Phantom and here we are. So then we go to the app the app you will find in the uh, App Store and in the Android Store, DG Vision, and this is the main menu. We have the camera setting, the album where you can uh, pick up pictures which are on the SD card of the camera news, and the settings. By the way, I'll show you where to put the SD card in. 
here is the SD card slot. Uh, you get a four gigabyte SD card with the Vision. Um, I bought a 32 gigabyte SD card, so I have lots to um, lots to fly. Um, the highest capacity is uh, 32 gigabyte. More, I think 64 doesn't work. So before I come to the camera settings, I go to the settings because in the settings there are two important points. First of all is the preview quality. If um, the the quality on the or if you have um, if you have not a stable connection, maybe your smartphone or your tablet is too slow or something like that, change the preview quality. Go down to 640 by 480 or to the to 320 to um, 240. Um, so try the different resolutions if you have problems with the uh, connection. Next point uh, is the flight control and gimbal. And here you can change the, to the FPV mode, first person view mode. mode. What does it mean? In the normal mode, when you look at the camera and you fly, you see the camera is absolute stable. In this direction, and I can turn it here, and in this direction. So it doesn't matter if you have wind or if you fly um, around you, it doesn't matter. The camera always is stable and is in the perfect position. So you have a stable picture, a clear picture without shaking. That's the big advantage of the gimbal. When you go to the first person view mode, what we do now, and now go back to the camera, um, then the camera doesn't um, hold, the, doesn't move in the roll axis. So what does it mean? When you make a first person flight and you want to see that the copter flies a curve and turns inside the curve, you see what happens. Now the camera doesn't stay in, in a perfect horizon level. The camera turns also a little bit uh, into the curve of the copter. So you have, when you, when you fly in first person view, you will see how the picture turns into the curve right on the horizon. Um, is, um, is, not, is not a perfect level, but the horizon goes like this. So you have the feeling of flying the curves fast and that's the first person view mode. So if you want to make first person view videos, um, then you have to change here in the settings to the FPV mode. If you want to make uh, video flights with perfect smooth picture and absolute stable picture and absolutely perfect level horizon, you have to switch off the FPV mode. Now we go to the camera and here we have the live picture. Um, you see SD card, battery capacity, capacity of the repeater and uh, altitude and so on. If you have questions to the setting of the camera, please look my other video which I made for the um, vision because there's no difference between, except the one point I showed you, there's no difference between the Vision and the Vision Plus and the camera settings. If you go to the camera settings, you will see you have here the, the uh, different setting picture size, you have 1080p, RAW, ISO setting, white balance, and so on, and so on. So these are exactly the same settings um, which you have um, in the Vision. One thing is a little bit different when you press here the button, you will see that little looks a little bit uh, in, an, in another, um, way but it's exactly the same. Here you can start photo or video. Here you can remove the info fields of the app. 
One thing, um, if you have seen my video of the um, Phantom Vision Channel 7, you know that you can put the uh, Channel 7 potentiometer um, on the Vision to move the camera upwards and downwards with a potentiometer so you don't have to use the settings here on the tablet. Um, this will not work by now, I hope it will soon, but this will not work with the uh, firmware 3.0 and the Vision Plus. So the only chance to move the camera upwards and downwards is here with um, the touch screen. You see here the green the green bar moves up and moves down uh, and you see the picture also. I think I should remove the lens cap so you would see a little bit, you can see a little bit, a little bit more it's, but it's better to remove the lens cap before you start the camera. Here we are. Uh, remove gimbal clamp, so that's it. Um, and here you see when I when I move the camera upwards and downwards. Okay, that's it. But you also see that's not smooth. So if you want to do this in flight, you will see whoop, you will see the steps. It's not real smooth. But um, there's a trick to get it a little bit smoother and that's the gyro sensor here. And if you use the gyro sensor, you can move the iPad or the mobile device and the camera moves then um, when you turn the iPad or when you turn the, uh, the tablet, you see. And with this option you get a little bit smoother but still, as you have seen, it's not real perfect. It's not the absolute perfect thing um, to, to get it real smooth. Um, it's a little bit better. The problem is when you, when you have it in a holder like mine, that's, that's very good because you have it in a holder um, and then you can move your, your body a little bit forward and backward to um, change it. But um, it's not very comfortable. So I hope that the I hope that the um, channel seven um, option is available soon. Also for the firmware three point um, We will see. Okay. So these were the important settings you have to do at home. Um, try the connection with your smartphone or your tablet PC to the Phantom also at home so that you see it works fine, that you have a stable connection. Check the, uh, the resolution for your smartphone, which one is best. And also check um, the, um, the um, time, the, the, the time between the picture is here, the latency um, uh, between the camera and your picture here, because it's good to know if the latency is a little bit longer, you may have a uh, um, slowly smartphone older generation um, with, a, with a slower processor, so you have to um, go a little bit down in the resolution to get a better latency time. Usually you should have a real good latency um, when you when you um, uh, when you look here, um, I see that the, the latency is very very good. Um, so I have almost the real uh, live picture on my tablet. Okay, so that's it at home. Now let's go out, and in the next part, I will show you what you have to do if you start the. DJI Phantom 2 Vision Plus outside and what are the most important things you have to do outside when you start flying. Okay, thanks for that, thanks for watching, see you later and till now I say as every time bye bye and moin moin. Mm -hmm.